off yesterday was working on this level result screen. Um, I was tightening up the timing a little bit and fixing a bunch of flow bugs. I still have more I have to look at today. Um, but first thing I wanted to work on is I wanted to have a transition that emphasizes the replay a little more. So I'm going to go to the results screen here and create a little animation for this sort of like Polaroid style call out to the replay. So that's going to be an animation I think at this level. Maybe I'll add another transform into the hierarchy here. This one can be full screen. This is going to be a kind of root. Play root. And then we'll make the call out a child of that. Okay, so this is the call out. And at this level, I can add an animator now. So we're going to create an animation. Mm, let's see. Call this level complete. Replay intro. Okay. Go into record mode and we're going to set this. Mm. Can we actually animate these? I think we can. So we're going to set it to be full screen essentially. And be unrotated. Ooh, yeah, okay. And we're actually going to want to go out of this and add an image. This is going to be a little like white screen flash. Okay, screen flash, white. It's going to take up the whole screen. And let's add a canvas group to this. So I can easily just change the alpha. Okay. Now let's go back here and screen flash alpha. And uh, the fact that it's enabled. There we go. Okay. So that should be really short. Like, I can drop this down and fade out. Coming out of the screen flash. Okay, and then we sit on this for just a second. So now let's grab the position and all the anchors. Copy those keyframes. Okay, and then we basically want it to rotate and scale down to where it should end up. And so we can go here and we want this. Alright, also when I get to here I want the screen flash to to turn off. And here I want it on. Okay, cool. So let's just scoot out here in time a little bit and then we're going to move this to where it should ultimately end up. Oops, it's hard to grab the arrow. There we go. Somewhere around here. Okay, that's close. Kind of want it to be off to the left. Boom. Then we can go here and give it a little, I'm a Polaroid, I'm not level kind of rotation. Okay, so that's going to flash, pause, shoom. Let's 
Look at that. Probably this pause is too long. Let's try that. So let's grab this. Shorten that pause. That's cool. Maybe actually the flash can be slower. Okay. Probably do like a little bounce. Let's see. Mm, best way to keep that simple would probably be to just grow this a little bit. good somewhere. Okay, let's go look at these curves. So this is the bounce and basically just need to make this a little more harsh. So we're gonna set these keyframes to the right. Yeah, all the tangents are gonna be linear. it pops and then actually let's go here right tangent free let's give it a little more bounce same thing over here now I gotta set these left tangent to free give it a little more okay how's that look Pretty good. And these are just smoothly transitioning, but I think that's okay. Okay. So now I've got this, you know, almost one second animation here. And replay root is now going to have an animator on it that knows how to play that animation. We're also going to want um, we're going to want an animation like if we come back to this menu we don't want to play this again so we need like an idle that's just in the at the end of this. So we can create a new clip, level, complete, uh, replay, idle. Now we'll go back to this animation, go to the dope sheet, grab these keys at the end, and those are going to be our keys here. And then in this animation, we want screen flash to be disabled. Okay, so that's just sitting there. Okay. And then we're going to say that that's actually the default state. Uh, sometimes we animate, we're going to use a trigger for that. Uh, go intro. So we'll transition to that if no exit time, duration is zero, Let's just pop to this animation if go intro is set. Okay, and then after this animation is done, go back to the idle. Okay. Just to be safe, I'm going to set these animations. Uh, this one to not loop, and this one to not loop. Okay. Okay, now 
the game complete screen is going to need to know this so we can use this payload thing where I can pass some information to a screen. But first let's give it a reference to uh, yeah to the animator replay thumbnail animator Okay, and then we're going to add a public read only string. Uh, let's see, where are there other cases where I've done this? Can't remember my convention. Mm, let's see. What's a menu you might actually tell stuff? Pause menu, no. Replay menu. Doesn't look like it. Mm. No. Mm, let's see. Confirmation pop up probably does use this. Did I cheese around it? Of course I did. <laughs> okay, not there. There we go. So I did it as public static strings with like S and then payload. Okay. Let's do that. Static string S payload do intro. Okay. And we're going to pass that information into the presentation sequence. So here we need to go bool do intro equals false. And then we say if the payload contains key as payload do intro. I mean, if it exists at all, we could call it that, but let's do it right. So, do intro equals boolean payload as payload do intro. And we're going to pass that into our presentation sequence code routine, which is down here now. So, bool do intro. Okay, so it'll be like if do intro, whoops. If do intro, then replay thumbnail animator dot set trigger go intro. And now the question is how long to wait? Before we move on to the other step. So, you know, like I could go back to this animation right here, and I can add an event to the end of this, which would have to call a function on a script here, which would then need to pass that somehow back to here to the level complete object so that this coroutine can somehow like wait until a boolean is set or something which is a lot of uh, annoying redirect and I already have up here some stupid variables that I can just set to t time things and we're just gonna do that again because it means we'll be able to get it working and move on so we want a replay intro delay And then down here in our presentation sequence, if we do the intro, we're going to yield return a new wait for seconds, uh, real time I guess, 
play intro delay. If we're not doing the replay intro, then we're just going to go straight to this stuff. Okay. Mm, let's see. Oh, hey. Just noticing the chat here. Sir Bunkins. Thank you. Um, it's not particularly interesting to look at right now, what I'm working on, but hey. <laughs> it's not all the cool physics stuff, I guess. All right, so I think I got this all hooked up right. We're going to try playing a level real quick. Okay, level data load level, AAA, our test level. Play. Okay. Oh, of course it would be helpful if I could get to the end level object. There we go. And no animation. Why? Oh, man, this happens to me every time. Thank goodness for this glorious uh, null reference debug printout. It's because I didn't hook up. animator. That's weird that it thinks it's on this object. Well, anyway. This doesn't have this animator set, which is right here. Like that. Should trigger it, though, because I saw the null reference. So let's try it again. Load level, AAA test level. There we go. Play. Do one swing around. Couple flips. Catch on. Okay. I will complete. Ugh. No. It's a different null reference. What have I done? What is this? This says level complete menu dot show. Yeah. Go look at this. Payload. If the payload is null. Duh. Okay, so this needs to be also in if payload does not equal null. And, of course, I'm actually going to have to set this to get the intro to show. And I should be able to use this to see that manager game on state change is where we actually do this. And... Here's where we're actually showing the level complete menu. So I think this one we do want a payload. Okay. Uh, forget the syntax for doing this properly. Okay, let's just do it the old-fashioned way. Oops. Dictionary string object payload equals new. There we go. And then payload we're going to set the level complete menu dot s payload do intro to true. And then we got to pass that into the menu. Okay. Will it compile? Looking good. Okay. So now let's see if we get our animation. Dun, dun, dun. Level load or test level. Okay. Level complete. Flash. Zoom. Okay, that whole thing feels a little hyperactive. Let's see. Let's watch that again. Level complete. Okay, should be a little longer delay. I didn't even set the delay yet, did I? For waiting for the Polaroid to happen before we start showing the metals. So I bet that's the problem. I was spouting off about how I added a dumb little delay. That's 0.5 right now. We'll set it to one second and try that again. Uh, 
Level complete. Boom. That's pretty cool. That's a little better. Okay, now. What to fix next? We got several things we need to do. One is that I want to make the replay editor Polaroid thing into a button. Also, I need to check the flow going into the replay editor from here. Also, the blurry image that's going behind the UI here is still the gameplay camera, even though it now really should be the static camera. And let's just try hacking to test this. So if I go down here to this background camera, which is in the set, right here, win cam, right? Can I add my full screen blur to this? I can. I have no shader set, that's bad. I want to use my shader. Target texture, what is that set to? Do I have one of those that's sitting around all the time? UI blur text, okay. Let's go try that. Set this to UI blur text. Okay, now if we go to the... Now these two are gonna be like fighting over things. It's upside down, that's interesting. But um, okay, so it's upside down, and then I would also need to go to the gameplay camera, and I would turn off full screen blur on that camera. That's more like what I'm looking for, except of course for the fact that it's upside down. I wonder why that's the case. Well, I'm not worried about that too much right now. So, three iterations, 0 0.01 blur size. What do we got here? Uh, wing cam. Ah, ooh, that's concerning. <laughs> Looks like I need an odd number of iterations. It must be flipping it each iteration. That's kind of gross. So one will look okay, two will be upside down, three will be right, four will be upside down again, five will be right. Yeesh. It's not good. So that means one of my passes is wrong. I'm gonna write that down. Blur is flipping y per iteration okay but let's let's get this working so for this what I need to do I need to go to the game camera here I need to copy my full screen blur and I'm going to put that onto the set I've only got one set up so far this is already making me feel like I need to make this into a prefab though Go to the beach set. We have this like wind cam here. It's got a camera, and now it's going to have the full screen blur component with the same blur settings I'm using for the game. So that's good. I do think this now, this wind cam, let's call it level set wind cam. Let's make that into its own prefab. So I should be able to easily now drop this into all my sets. We'll do that later. Test that. And that's going to have this camera with the full screen blur set up properly. Now, I need to be smart enough to turn off the blur on the game camera when we're here. Yeah, now does the look i already forgetting, how did I... How do I actually toggle that camera on? Do I do it here in show somewhere, right? 
It's going to be down here. Right here. So here I also need to disable blur on the gameplay camera. Okay. I already have a reference to the game camera. That's nice. Not a reference to the exact script, but that's okay. We can just do full screen blur, blur script equals game camera reference dot get component full screen blur. If that's not null, disable it. Okay. And then where else do we do this? Here, this is where we turn it off. So, re-enable the blur on the game camera. Oops. Okay, we want to do something very similar. Oops. Right there. Right here. But we're going to turn this back on. Okay. That didn't need any new references, did it? No. So we should be able to just test this. Okay. Level data load level test level. Play. One swing. Catch it. Level complete. Boom, blur down. Hey, look at that. Looks pretty nice. Okay. So, I also need to think, well, I need to not forget that I think my find the chalk little call out there is dumb. That should probably actually just be the chalk prefab itself. Yeah, let's try that. It shouldn't be too hard to do. So instead of... Let's turn this off. So instead of this, like, weird image here, which is just, like, a crappy one I made, oh my god, who knows how long ago. Which is... Um, Results, challenge, chalk, chalk image. So what if we hide that? And then we actually just get... The in-game chalk itself. Which is going to be tiny. It's okay. Alright. And we... Remove that... Okay, so we're going to remove some of these scripts from it, remove that, remove that, keep the animator, remove this. Okay. It's got some particles. We don't need these ones. Disable that game object. It's interesting that it's kind of like showing up as a brown... Weird. Chalk cube. Maybe I need lighting. Set this to the UI layer. Okay, that's closer. Guess we better get it out in front here a little bit. Cool. Now, I guess we should just test if that works. Also, the target positions for these uh, metals that animate in. Same as these ones over here, right? Yeah. These three. How do they know where they're going? How do they do that? 
target transform metal right there look at that okay it's a little low so this how I got this working we've got a grid layout group and then each one of these pieces has uh, just some subsections here okay So, what? This is the title, okay. Ah, this would have been better probably to do as a vertical layout group. Do I want to change that now? Well, these aren't prefab, so I'm going to have to like adjust all these. That sucks. Oh well. We'll do it the cheese way. So, we're going to pop these up a little bit. In order to replicate this, I'm going to copy that and paste it onto these other transforms. Like that. Like that. Okay. Let's go back here. That's the title. The value. Okay, let's fix requirement now. Scoot that up to match there. Be about right there. weird was there like a second looks like there is like a weird what is this yeah what is that weird header piece there is that this No. The heck is that? Uh, is there an easy place to click on this thing? There it is. What is this? The arena results. Hide that. Okay. Back to what I was doing. So, the requirement. We want this to be vertically centered. No. that okay so we gotta copy this onto here and here and then both of those need to know that this should be zero okay now the, re the value itself this is the players Result. Man. Okay. Well, that can still be a little bigger. Okay. Let's copy that. Onto here. And then the metal itself, which is here. We can give it a little more breathing room now, like that. Copy that, metal, metal, paste that. Okay, now we gotta go over here, and the actual chalk itself should be the same as this. Like that. Ooh, no, no, not requirement, value. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Maybe that gives the metals a little more breathing room on the bottom there. All right, let's play this and see how it looks. Nope. Interesting. All right, I'm no longer disabling those on start because that was causing some problems. I gotta move that code somewhere else. Level data, load level, test level. There we go. Barely got that. Okay. Probably still a little low, and I was hiding this uh, image. So actually, I kind of want this to be more like... Well, let's see. Where's the actual metal? Let's collapse all this down. Okay. Open this back up. I think it's probably this metal. Yeah, I kind of wish it was like right there. Okay. Use the old finger on the screen trick. So. Get this back on, and this needs to be even higher than that, okay? Needs to be like there. Yeah, okay. So, we want the center of the metal to be more like that. Copy that, paste it onto the other two, like that. Let's look at that one more time. <coughs> okay. Test level, play it. That's pretty good. Still feels a little hyperactive. I think I was trying to speed this whole thing up because it felt a little lethargic before, but now it's still pretty fast. Oh! because I didn't save my change here of this being one second. Let's test that. Boom. Polaroid metal. Way better. Okay. Classic Unity play mode stuff. So when I undo play mode here, I gotta remember to change this to one second. Save the project. Okay. So cleaned up the sequencing, we fixed the full screen blur, alright, next up is what, let's see, okay, let's look at the case where the level ends with a mat, so if I go here, let's Let's make a test level for this case. We'll keep this simple. We want a bar with the gymnast, and we want a landing mat. And this mat is going to be the level goal. Okay. Let's move this a little bit. It's a little more like a high bar. Okay. Let's give this some values too, so we'll earn a medal if we do this in less than. 10 seconds, and if you get more than 1,500 points, okay, this is going to be BBB. Oh, God damn it. Trying to move too fast. Clear all. Clear all. Let's try that again. Come down here. Boom. We want a bar right there-ish. 
And we want a mat. And we want the mat to be the level goal. Go to level data. We want this to be level called BBB. 10 second par time, 1500 point par score. Save. There we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hang on, let's try that again. So you can actually just tap your feet on it. We don't love that. Oh, that's interesting. Edit's not doing anything, huh? If I go back to edit, I'm in edit mode, but I haven't turned off the menu and. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Let's fix that real quick. We're gonna need to fix that level too. Mm, so when we hide, so that's fine. Let's go back here. Level complete retry. What are we doing? We're hiding the level in the complete menu here. We probably need to do that here as well and if you say back to map it doesn't really matter because we're changing scenes but we'll put it in for completeness same thing here okay replay is going to have to do that as well and edit needs to hide that menu Let's test that flow. So let's load our new test level. B B B B B. Okay, while we're here, let's fix this. Let's move this a little bit like that. Save that. Now let's play. We landed on the mat. Level complete. Showing the replay. Looked a little weird. And then if we go back to edit, okay, we can edit again. Let's play again. Is it not showing the flash? Okay, now what I wanted to test though was the case where you attempt a landing. Oh, that's not going to work. So let's just try and do a layout. Land it. See, it sits here for a while. And then when it finally realizes you've landed, it goes to level complete. And that looks kind of dumb because. The gymnast doesn't really do anything after, um, like, yeah, when we know you didn't land it, it's okay, but when you do, like this, land it, oh, jeez, gotta actually land it. Oops. Oh, that's not going to happen. Okay. <laughs> Front flip, why not? Yeah, so you land it, and then we realize you landed it. And then we finally go to this screen and you flop over like an idiot. So, I think what I want to have happen is you come around. Oh, come on. Right? You're landing it, you're landing it, you're landing it. And then we award. Like somewhere around here, 
level complete triggers. And while it's showing the like level complete text, we would award these points and we would move on before before the gymnast resets. So we need to go look at this sequencing. This can be the last uh, main task for today, I think. Okay, so I know this is in in here somewhere. I think it's like, or no. First of all, we need to look in gymnast.cs, and we need to look for where we attempt landing. Okay. So let's remind ourselves how this code works. This is an update, right? Yeah, fixed update. We're like, hey, do we have a target mat? And we are, in fact, attempting a landing. If so, accumulate how much time has passed. Then we get the body parts and we observe their angles and stuff. We have some, like, cheat springs and stuff to try and stick the gymnast to the mat. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and then here's where we look to see if, this w if it worked or not. So, if the angle between your hips and your feet is off or your torso is off, we cancel the landing attempt and we mark the level as one. That flow is fine. Okay, now if we haven't already landed, and we made it past the, oh look at this, this is great, I've already got two timers. So I have a timer here for actually like, when do we give you the points? And I have a timer here for like, when do we mark the level as one? Those are both properties of the gymnast. So if we look at our gymnast uh, prefab, it's just going to be right here, right? This is the default one. It's going to be here in landing, right here. So, we watch it for two seconds to decide if it's a legit landing or not. And we wait, though, for three seconds to have elapsed before we mark the level as complete. I kind of want these to be flipped. I want to actually, well, let's see. I'm okay with the game thinking you stuck it a little bit faster. That's okay. Like, let's say that that was like, actually, let's leave that at two. Now, if we set this to like, one. Let's test that. Now, my theory is that the sequencing will look right, but you might not get awarded the points anymore. Let's find out. Let's actually look at this bigger. Okay. Level data, load level, BBB, boom. Play it. Here we go. We did not get. Oh, we did. We did get six thousand points. Okay, let's look at that timing again. One thousand. Are they like the same-ish right now? That's interesting. Oh, I'm not gonna land that. Gonna land that. Ooh, that one didn't count, huh? I'm <laughs> great at not sticking the landings.
Right now it looks like they're happening at like the exact same time, right? 3,000 points. Let's lock the points more closely. If you're not seeing the on-screen call-out about getting the extra points for sticking it. Ooh, jeez. thousand points. I think we're getting the points. We are. We can't tell though. So that's interesting though, the timing. Oh come on. Come on. You can do this. No, apparently not. Maybe easier for me to land a double. Let's try it. seem to be triggering like at the exact same time. We are getting the points, but you can't tell. What do I have it set as right now? I have it set as... Two and one. Let's go over and look at this. Ah. Oh. Okay. We're setting attempting landing to false once we notify the game is one. So right now, even though I said observe for two seconds, it's only going to observe for one second, which turned out to be enough though, so that's good. That can be a one. But this, let's make this more like... Like... 0 0.5, and then... Let's move this to here. And then if we go and look at this score landed trick allow scoring. Well, we are letting it happen. We're just not showing it, I think. Probably because when we mark the level complete, we hide that UI. Pretty sure. Let's look at that. Level 1. Right here. We score any final trick if you're on a bar. We start the level complete sequence. We turn on the com level complete camera. And we set the score here. We don't want to set the score right here. We do want to stop the timer. Let's move this into the level complete section down here. Where is that? Start level complete. So here, right before we go to the main menu, or the level complete menu, we're going to actually set... Oh, crap. We got a bunch of values here that hang on where was that
right here, we're in level one. And this is where we actually like save a bunch of junk. So let's move most of this. We're gonna copy all of that. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna get rid of this. And now we're gonna go to here. I actually do it right here. Pretty sure we come through this flow even if you press the skip button, so that should be okay. And here's where we're gonna work out your score time, all that stuff. Okay. So I didn't really see uh, right here. Okay, so we're not gonna hide this yet. Let's try that. Let's see how busted this is now. So let's go here. Let's try our bar based level first. Kind of the standard level. There's a lot of UI still on the screen there now. Confetti happening. <coughs> Let's look at this again. Yes, I don't love how the score pop up is overlapping with level complete now. Other than that, though, okay, so that's kind of ugly, but let's look at the landing on a mat case. And still not marking the level as complete. <coughs> until you like finished checking the landing. Yeah. We are seeing the score though, overlapping with level complete, which is kind of messed up. <coughs> okay, so let's have a look at this again. Here, right now we have the landing temp takes a second but the notification only happens half a second later in theory. Let's go back to this and s no, to gymnast. So, ah, okay, because this is requiring did land to be true. Is that necessary? Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's closer. that again. So you come around to land the trick. Yeah, we're marking it complete sooner. I almost wonder if I just need to rethink that level complete like wiggle text. Yeah, and you see the extra score. Okay. Hmm getting somewhere. Definitely still some cleaning up to do. Whoa. Okay. 
can I fit another flip? Eh, not really. <laughs> Here we go, full twisting triple. Did not nail the landing. Get some speed up. Oh, that would have been pretty good. Too far. There we go. Ugly giant to get speed. Let's land a big trick. And the stream with a something. Let's try quad one, two, three, four. Start coming out. Stick it now. Can I land a full? Not like that. Oh, too much. Hey. Okay, we're still having the like dumb flop at the end. That's the result of multiple things, so we can work on that. What the hell camera angle is that? That one looks good. Zoom in looks good. Handheld looks okay. Drone looks okay. That one looks. What is that? That's a gameplay camera? I don't know what that is. Chalk looks okay. I like this better. Helps you know what the heck the chalk even is. Particle's not showing. Look at that real quick. Um, here's the chalk. Uh, probably because the particles are tiny because they need to be set to scale scaling mode hierarchy and those things look a little overbearing in the UI don't they can we tweak this like Bring this down. Yeah, let's go like this. These have a color over lifetime, right? They do. Okay, so the particles last a long time, so it takes a while to see the change. That's more like what I think it should look like in the UI. 71 alpha, okay. So let's set that. Okay. All right. So timing is closer. Now we need to make the level complete. Uh, wobble text look better. Well, we got some stuff done. Still need to make it into a button. Still need some more flow checks here. Okay. Alright. Save it. We'll commit this later. That's enough for one day. We'll be back tomorrow to pick up where we left off. Bye.